Income Tax 2023-2024. Electing the Section 179 deduction. How do you elect the deduction? Get ready and some coffee because we're looking to get the tax man off our back with income tax. Preparation 2023-2024. Most of this information can be found in Publication 946, How to Depreciate Property, Section 179, Deduction, Special Depreciation Allowance, Makers, Listed Property, and More Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at our income tax formula, remembering that the first half of the tax formula, basically an income statement, most income statements having income minus expense resulting in net income, here having income minus various deductions resulting in taxable income, sole proprietorship schedule C rolling into line one income of the formula, the schedule C itself basically being an income statement having business income minus business expenses, which could also be called business deductions resulting in in essence net business income which is what rolls from the schedule c to line one income of the four first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Formula, the formula outlining the calculation for the 1040 form, this being the first page of the form 1040, Schedule C ultimately rolling into line number eight. Additional income from Schedule 1. This is the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income part number one, Schedule C rolling into line three business income from the schedule c here is a schedule c profit or loss from business basically a p l profit and loss or income statement format income minus expenses we're focused down here on the expenses which usually has the most different types of categories within it some of those categories being more complex than others one of those complex categories being as we've seen in prior presentation depreciation where even if on a cash-based system, the IRS will typically require us to deviate from the cash-based system, putting the depreciable property on the books as an asset, which means it's kind of like a balance sheet account, but we don't have a balance sheet because all we have is the Schedule C, which is an income statement, but we could have another schedule, which is a depreciation schedule, tracking the balance sheet account of fixed assets and the related depreciation and accumulated depreciation allocating the expense over its useful life that being a normal accounting process for accrual accounting however for taxes they often add on changes to kind of like the normal accounting process such as being able to depreciate more up front such as with the section 179 deduction, which is put in place not for accounting reasons, but typically more for politicians trying to win favor kind of things and that type of stuff, stimulate the economy and so on and so forth. So we're looking specifically now at the section 179 deduction. All right, how do you elect the deduction? So the idea here being we have something like depreciable assets, we can't expense it, but rather have to put it on the books as an asset, meaning putting it on the depreciation schedule and then depreciating it. And so now once we do that, we question as to whether we can take the 179 deduction, which would allow us to depreciate more in year one, possibly all of it in year one, which means we could have just expensed it and we would basically be in the same place. But... We have to, of course, put it on the books as an asset and then do the 179 election because that's the way the tax code has, in essence, developed. So if we want to do that, which typically we would if we could, because 
we're going to have uh, more deduction up front is typically better than deducting later. So if we can get the deduction earlier, typically that's what we would want to do. All right, election. You elect to take the Section 179 deduction by completing Part 1 of Form 4562. Caution, if you elect the deduction for a listed property described in Chapter 5, complete Part 5 of Form 4562 before completing Part 1. One of the major components of listed properties are things like the car, for example, as we have seen multiple times, will often have special rules related to it because listed property is the kind of property the IRS is a bit skeptical of because if I was an IRS auditor, I would be imagining, for example, some rich business person in a $300,000 car cruising the strand and then basically writing it off as a business expense and probably thinking to myself, do you, I mean, I feel like a car is there to drive from point A to point B from the office to the client's place of work. So it seems like an excessive write-off of a $300,000 car. But again, you can argue that you need a $300,000 car because that's what's pulling in the clients, man. That's what's bringing, that's the money maker right there. I don't know. But, the, but you can see why the listed property then gets treated separately, possibly more restrictions on the ability to depreciate and an accelerated fashion up front, like with the 179 deduction. All right, so for property placed in service in 2023, file form 4562 with either of the following. Your original 2023 tax return, whether or not you file it timely, and amended return for 2023 filed within the time prescribed by law. So in other words, Obviously, you need to be, once you file the return, if you want to take the election, you want to do it at the point in time you file. And depreciation is one of those things where you would like to follow the adage of measure twice, cut once, as opposed to tinkering with something until you get it right. It's kind of like if you're building a home, certain things, of course, if you're measuring the door frame, you would like to make sure you get the measurement right before you cut the wood because it's going to be more difficult to glue wood back together if you cut the wood too short, as opposed to other things when you're tinkering with like the guitar or something, you just keep on playing around with it until your fingers start doing the right thing, right? So this is one of those things that you could end up being more locked into. It's going to be more difficult to change oftentimes. Therefore, it takes it's better time spent to get it right the first time generally. But if you don't, then you might be able to go back and amend uh, the tax return, noting that there could be a statute of limitations or a time frame in which you have to make sure to do that, after which point you might be limited to be able to change it and noting that depreciation is basically like an accounting method. So you're kind of locked into it. So if you're, if you're taking a maker's depreciation half year convention and you took a 179 deduction, then it's gonna, you're basically locked into it for the life of the depreciable property, it's going to be depreciated the same way because we need consistency typically for accounting, which is reflected in the tax code. So an election made on an amended return must specify the item of Section 179 property to which the election applies and the part of the cost of each, each such item to be taken into account. So we said that there's a cap on the 179 deduction. So if you can't apply the 179, of course, to all the property, then you're going to have to tell the IRS which property the 179 is being applied to. The amended return must also include any resulting adjustments to taxable income. Election for qualified Section 179 real property. You can elect to ex uh, expense certain qualified real property that you placed in service as Section 179 property for tax years beginning in 2023. For more information, you can see the election above. Also, see Revenue Procedure 2019-8 on page 347 of Internal Revenue Bulletin 2019-3. It's available on the IRS website. Revoking an election. So what if that, again, you'd like to get it right the first time, but what if, you, what if you're saying, hey, I, I made the election, I did that in error for whatever reason, I want to fix it, I don't want to take the election, I want to revoke the election. So an election or any specification made in the election to take Section 179 deduction for 2023 can be revoked within IRS approval by filing an amended return. 
So similar kind of process. You, you, for whatever reason, you filed the return, you made the election to take the 179 deduction, which some software might do by default, but it gets a little bit confusing these days because you'll recall that we have the normal depreciation for taxes is usually like a maker's depreciation, which is a double declining balance, usually half year convention oftentimes, which we'll talk about later, which makes sense from a normal accounting standpoint for the most part. They're copying accounting, best accounting practices for the most part. And then they added these upfront items, including the 179 deduction and then possibly bonus or special depreciation, which is also an upfront thing, which is the deviation from normal, generally accepted accounting principles. So now that you have these multiple things that could allow you to depreciate it upfront, then you come up with the question of, should I take the 179 deduction or a special or bonus depreciation upfront? And that gets a little bit confusing. So it's possible that you, you pick a combination that's not, not optimized. Uh, some software might default, for example, to take either the 179 deduction or the special unless you tell it not to. And so then, and that'll be the default situation. But again, you want to make sure that you kind of measure twice and cut once, optimizing what you think the deduction should be up front when you have these long-term assets that are going to have an impact on multiple periods into the future if you can. And then if there's a problem with it, then of course you might be able to amend the return, but you would have to do that within the time frame allowed in order to amend the return. So uh, the amended return must be filed within the time prescribed by law. The amended return must also include any resulting adjustments to taxable income. Once made, the revocation is irrevocable.